welcome back students to one more series of your JE as well as NEET chemistry right as I've kept in the community tab I think yesterday I've asked you how what how many like as I said I am ready with the tricks uh, how for physical organic as well as inorganic and I also asked you how many tricks do you want per day uh, the response was huge. Thank you so much for that. Right, I promise I'll be uploading the tricks for you all so that you'll, you can directly apply these tricks during your examination. Right, so basically during your JE as well as NEET, I think uh, you, this year students in one way, if I have to say, you, you ha you're lucky enough of having time sitting at home and studying. Or, yeah, so certain exams got postponed. It's okay. But this this year, the JE as well as NEET as aspirants, you can comfortably sit, relaxed and study for the examination. Right. So with this trick series, as I told you, I'll be doing the tricks which are uh, uh, involving organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry as well as physical chemistry. Right, students? Let's start off with the trick series. So let's go to the first trick. Right. So basically, uh, what, what is important? Time is the most important factor during your examination, isn't it? Right. So during this given time, so basically you need to solve your physics, you need to solve your chemistries and you need to solve your max also. And for some, those have opted for biology. So that particular time, whatever is given very less time you need to finish off the uh, question so right so for that i tried to really you know it took a lot of time almost more than a week time for me to make collect compile everything together i tried to make different different tricks let us go with the first trick that is organic chemistry trick one let me write trick one so right what is that trick let's see so basically let us we start with the first tagline that is S L S N L T S. So, what is the full form of this? You need to remember this uh, trick for what is it standing for. Let's see. S stands for very nice. I felt it's. I, I thought smells. S stands for smells. N stands for natural. L stands for <coughs> like. T stands for teen, S stands for spirit. This is the tagline which I have given for the first trick. Remember, what is SN, SNLTS? Spells natural like teen spirit. Hope you are noting it. Ma'am, where can I use this SNLTS? Remember, let's see this. So, SNLTS, when I said smells natural like teen spirit, the most important background behind this. Let me write that. So, hope students, you have noted it. Right. So, how to study this and how to apply this in the exam. Very important thing. So, S stands for the first, what is that? S-N-L-T-S. Once again, let us repeat. Smells natural like teen spirit. Right. Now, S stands for substrate. N stands for nucleophile. L stands for leaving group, T stands for temperature as well as S stands for subsolvent. Right? Let us write again. S stands for substrate. N stands for nucleophile. L stands for leaving group. T stands for temperature. S stands for solvent. So these are all the one, two, three, four, five important uh, concepts or the topic which you should remember whenever you're solving organic chemistry mechanisms like the SN1, SN2, E1, in E2. Right. So let us start. So SN1, SN2, E1, E2, which one will uh, help us? Now in SN, SNLTS, I said first is a substrate. Always remember when I take the concept of substrate, what, what should I remember? What are the different types of substrates we have? We have primary substrates, one degree substrates. We have two degree substrates. We have three degree substrates. Yes, students? Yes. So whenever we are saying about one degree substrate, so basically what is one degree substrate if I have to say, so here this one degree substrate like just like your methyl group. Always remember one degree substrates. What will they help us? They will help us or they will always allow us to, I means it will undergo SN2 as well as E2 mechanism. When I take the secondary substrate, they are going to, I means they will undergo SN2 plus SN1 plus E2 plus E1 mechanisms. 
But when I take the tertiary substrate, remember they are going to catalyze means they are going to undergo only SN1 and E1 mechanisms. This is the most important trick you have to remember. So substrates, primary, secondary, tertiary and these are the type of mechanisms they are going to undergo. Right. Suppose if I have after substrates, if I am going to the next thing, what are they? Let us come back. The next type is nucleophiles, isn't it? Right. So basically nucleophiles, when I have to speak about them, what are nucleophiles, right? So they're electron rich or electron deficient, they're electron rich species, isn't it? Right. So here one important clue you have to remember when it is a nucleophile and we have two types, isn't it? Weak nucleophiles and strong nucleophiles. Right. Always remember strong nucleophiles. What are the strong nucleophiles which we have? Uh, let us uh, list out. R O minus is a strong nucleophile. O H minus is a strong nucleophile. N H two minus is a strong nucleophile. R L I is a strong nucleophile. What is the speciality of this? Whenever you have these strong nucleophiles in the reaction, they will always promote which type of reaction? SN2 mechanism reactions only. This is one important trick. Once again, whenever you find these strong nucleophiles, which type of reaction it promotes? It promotes SN2. Ma'am, why? What is the important thing? Because the leaving group, whatever is there, the leaving group, whatever it has to, is there in that particular reaction, it has to be, uh, you know, forced off. You have to take out the leaving group correct yes so once again substrate primary secondary tertiary primary undergoes sn2 and e2 secondary undergoes sn1 sn2 e2 and e1 tertiary undergoes e1 and sn1 suppose if it is a nucleophile strong nucleophile like this they are going to promote always sn2 reaction mechanism that's over s is over n is over then i have to come back to the next concept that is leaving group let us write that leaving group right so now the third category is leaving group now in leaving group again what are the different types of leaving group you have you have good leaving group then you have mediocre leaving groups then you have fast move, leaving groups i mean it's good or fast okay good leaving groups or great leaving groups next would be mediocre leaving groups or very lazy leaving groups which will not leave that particular thing and go so when i have to speak about the leaving groups two things you have to remember great or great leaving groups is one i'm going to categorize the next category is mediocre means the middle type mediocre leaving group is one more always remember great leaving group example is i minus mediocre leaving group is example is cl minus okay right so when i have to speak now uh, the least if i have to say i can go with f minus so in the great leaving group which type of mechanism they always promote they are going to promote e1 or sn1 mechanisms only if I have the mediocre, suppose if I have Cl minus in the particular reaction given, in the question given, they will always promote E2 as well as SN2 mechanism. Remember this one more trick of what you should remember. So substrate I have given one trick, nucleophile I have given one trick, leaving group also I have given one trick. Now let us go to the next one that is temperature. Right students, hope you are noting it. So when I have to go to the temperature concept, right. So temperature is the next factor which you have to remember right so again in temperature in the exam remember in the question if the temperature is given or if the temperature mentioned is more than 50 degrees centigrade remember this if this temperature is mentioned if the reaction happens at more than 50 degrees centigrade you have to immediately relate that elimination reaction is going to happen elimination is favored so elimination reaction is favored this is one more trick which you have to remember favored right suppose if the temperature is less than 50 degrees means lower than this then always remember substitution reaction is going to be favored so what is the clue you have to remember in the question if they give you more than 50 degrees elimination reaction if it is less than 50 degrees substitution reaction is going to be favored this is also over now i what what did i complete substrate i have completed nucleophile i have completed leaving group i have completed temperature i have completed now last but not the least i have to talk about solvent right let us rub this and write the solvent students yes so solvent so when i take the solvent what are two what are the types of solvent we have we have protic solvents 
is one category then we have one more category that is polar aprotic solvents protic solvents and polar aprotic solvents correct yes now what are the examples of protic solvents water alcohols hf ammonia or all polar uh, all protic solvents what are polar aprotic solvents means polar aprotic solvents are those which will not have that means you know acidic hydrogen ions h plus ions they will not have once again protic solvents examples are water alcohol hydrogen fluoride ammonia polar aprotic solvents examples are dmf what is dmf it is nothing but dimethyl formamine correct right so i'll write the examples once i rub this let's see what actually does it promote so always remember if you have protic solvents like as i said let us write the examples on this side that is water one is alcohol one more is <coughs> hf one more is ammonia what will they uh, promote always they are going to promote sn1 or even mechanism i have done a video on sn1 reaction even mechan even uh, reaction also please watch that you will understand what actually is sn1 even suppose if i have polar protic solvents what are the different examples i said the examples are dmf one more is hmpa one more is dmso i'll tell you what this means they are always going to promote the next one that is sn2 as well as e2 mechanisms right why this one will undergo only as yes, promote only sn1 even because they stabilize the cation intermediate correct yes sn1 there is a formation they will stabilize the cation intermediate but here in this case in sn2 because they do not form any hydrogen bond they don't have any hydrogen isn't it they do not form hydrogen bond and they cannot interfere as much as a nucleophile so that's the reason they prefer sn2 so now i said what are the full form of this dmf stands for dimethyl formamine hmpa stands for h stands for hexa methyl phosphoamide dmso stands for dimethyl sulfoxide dimethyl sulfoxide so remember these clues students so the first trick which i have told you is always remember smells natural like teen spirit what is that s stands for substrate n stands for nucleophile l stands for leaving group t stands for temperature s stands for solvent all the five characters you have to remember so again let me in meet you with the next trick of this series next trick students after sn lts what is that sn s stands for substrate <coughs> n stands for here yes, students nucleophile t stands for temperature l stands for the leaving group and then the solvent right now let us come to the next trick very important trick in the exam suppose if there is a question which has either free radical suppose if if it it has a carbene reaction intermediate suppose if it has a carbanion suppose if it has it has a carbocation right if they ask you a question like this which is either whether it is diamagnetic or paramagnetic compulsory question it is let's see so here in the trick next important thing you have to remember how to solve paramagnetic or diamagnetic question let us let me write the question how to solve paramagnetic or diamagnetic nature of reaction intermediates reaction intermediates suppose this is given to you what you what are you supposed to do it reaction intermediates right so here basically remember the different types of reaction intermediates what are, what are, what have we learned right in general organic chemistry we have learned reaction intermediates some different different things like let me take the first reaction intermediates the first let me let us make divide the okay my line is not straight i have to make one straight line okay i'll try okay now 
now also it is not straight no problem this is not the important thing for me learning the concept is important so the first reaction intermediate which i'm going to learn right is carbon ion okay so carbon ion <coughs> if i have to say how many valence electrons does it have so valence electron is where we are going to calculate whether it is diamagnetic or paramagnetic so let us write magnetic behavior right so when i have to take the <coughs> structure of carbon ion. what are the different types of this one carbon ions we have primary first is methyl carbon ion primary carbon ion secondary carbon ion and tertiary carbon ion let us draw that and write the valence electrons so when i have to take the carbon ion the first type is methyl carbon ion Meth carbon ion means negative isn't it so there is one lone pair of electron here let me put this so first is methyl carbon ion how many valence electrons does it have one two three four 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so uh, 7, 8, isn't it? So total number are 8, valence electrons are 8, right, so next, next important thing, when I have to take the primary carbon ion, so which is with one methyl group, this is 1 CH3, one more CH3, dot, dot, this is primary, so the number of uh, valence electrons 8 again if i have to take now this one is what this is primary suppose if i have to make secondary carbo uh, carbon ion what will i do i'm going to take out one hydrogen and introduce this this becomes secondary then also it is 8 suppose if i have to do tertiary carbon ion what will i do i'll take out h and make cst now also 8 that means in a carbon ion that is methyl primary carbon ion, secondary carbon ion or tertiary carbon ion, the total valence electrons are 8, isn't it? 8. When it is 8, whether it is paramagnetic or diamagnetic, all are paid, isn't it? Half, half are filled, all 4 and 4, 8. So, compulsory because there is paid a uh, uh, paid number of electrons or domains we call it as diamagnetic so carbon ion is diamagnetic in nature clear students right done let us next write free radical so in the second one or the second category when i take the second part of the trick which is free radical right so what is the structure of free radical if i have to draw let me rub this properly free radical r a d i c a l so free radical structure free radical looks like r c R, R and dot. Now, count the number of uh, electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, the number of valence electrons is 7. Isn't it odd? Odd. That, that is the reason free radicals are always paramagnetic in nature. This is clear, students. Done. Yes. The next type of uh, reaction intermediate which we have is carbene. So, let me take out this and then write the next one. So, the next category of reaction intermediate is, again, let us make three lines, right? The first one is reaction intermediate, Ri. The next second one is valence electrons, second column. Third column is magnetic behavior, right? So, the next reaction intermediate, what do we have? We have carbenes. So, what are carbenes basically? Carbenes, the formula is R, C, R, dot dot now count the number of valence electrons one two three four five six six isn't it so if it is six isn't it order even it is even so i can comfortably write it is a diamagnetic it is when carbon is there it is diamagnetic in nature that's done suppose if i have the next reaction intermediate that is your uh, carbocation so next reaction intermediate is carbocation what how how are you writing carbocation basically carbocation is denoted it is plus isn't it so so hydrogen carbon hydrogen carbo cation cation means plus this is hydrogen now count the number of electrons one two three four five six total number of electrons are six again it is paired so it is diamagnetic in nature so the next trick remember diamagnetic now let us erase everything and come uh, combine together so in trick two i have set one important thing what is that carbon ion let me write a bit above first thing carbon ion carbon ion number of valence electrons are eight so it is diamagnetic in nature diamagnetic in nature second category i said it is free radical free radical how many are the number of valence electrons number of valence electrons as i've shown you seven so it is paramagnetic in nature next category of uh, uh, 
reaction intermediate which I said is carbene. How many valence electrons are there in carbene? Carbene has six valence electrons. So it is even. So it is diamagnetic in nature. Next, uh, fourth one is carbocation. Carbocation. So in carbocation, how many uh, valence electrons do we have? As we have seen, six. So it is again diamagnetic in nature. So remember students, whenever you have these reaction intermediates in the question, if they ask what is the magnetic behavior, this is what you have to remember. So diamagnetic means paired, paramagnetic means unpaired number of electrons. So this is what is your second trick. I think it helps you to add on or helps you to solve the question given. Let us come back and do the third trick. Now let us come back and do the third trick which is very important once again in your general organic chemistry. Right. So if they ask you a question, what is a compound which shows all the effects of general uh, means all the effects of GOC? What are the different effects? Basically, we have <coughs> hyperconjugation, we have inductive effect, then we have resonance, then we have Right, right. The most important thing, mesomeric effect, electromeric effect also. Right. So the main important things are hyperconjugation, resonance as well as inductive effect. So here they've asked you which is a compound which shows all these effects. Just see the example. So let us write the question. A compound, a compound which shows all the effects okay right so what are the what is the compound let me write one example and explain you so example is suppose i take a compound ch3 ch double bond ch c double bond or ch3 this is the compound how can how will i categorize this just see first as soon as the compound is given to you let's start numbering it one this is from here this is where you need to number it one two three four five yes students yes so if i have to speak first important thing c5 is a carbon which shows hyper conjugation it shows hyper conjugation now what is hyper conjugation as we know hyper conjugation i did a video also here i'll explain you the definition here it is nothing but interaction of electrons in the sigma bond when this is bonded this interaction of electrons in the sigma bond with the adjacent pi bond isn't it interaction of electrons the sigma bond with adjacent empty or partially filled p orbitals okay once again interaction of sigma bond means interaction of the electrons of the sigma bond with the adjacent pi or adjacent partially filled p orbitals is hyperconjugation so c5 carbon shows hyperconjugation let us come back next i have to think about resonance so there is a double bond here basically double bond is here isn't it so c2 carbon is going to show us resonance right resonance done next when i have to come back so resonance is over hyperconjugation is over inductive effect so basically again the c2 carbon only here you have double bond oxygen isn't it so this is where is the double bond oxygen so again c2 carbon where you have double bond oxygen this is where it's going to show in inductive effect so basically inductive effect what is this it's nothing but polarization of sigma bond so what is it? It is either to the electron withdrawing group or electron releasing group, isn't it? Once again, hyperconjugation is interaction of the electrons in the sigma bond with the adjacent empty or partially filled p orbital. That is hyperconjugation, which is seen here. When it comes to C2, C double bond O resonance, isn't it? Shift. Yes. So this is resonance stabilized. Means it, it will show resonance because of the presence of double bond. And when I have to come with the inductive effect, what is inductive effect? Inductive effect is nothing but polarization of sigma bond due to electron withdrawing a releasing group. Now, basically students, here I'm giving definitions. But if you have to actually know the concept, please go to the inductive effect video where I have shown plus i effect, minus i effect also there. So remember this compound, very important question. The compound which shows all the three effects, hyperconjugation, resonance and inductive effect is this compound. Right. Now let's come back and do the next trick. Very important. Gradually, I'll be going to the difficulty level. Right. Let's come back and do the trick four. Now let's come back and do the trick four. Very interesting and very important. That's it. Now, so you have to remember this particular trick where to apply. Suppose this. Let us understand the concept. Then use take an example. Right. Always remember two things. That is, let us make divide the page into two. What is that? When the 
electronegativity is higher concept when the electronegativity is lower one concept when the electronegativity is higher what will be the type of the bond the bond will be a stronger bond that is the first thing correct because it's a smaller in, it's smaller in size suppose if the electronegativity is lower the bond will be a weaker bond understood done suppose if the bond is stronger what is the type of an acid the acid is a weaker acid because the bond is strong it will not release the h plus ions here suppose if the bond is weaker the easily it releases h plus ions and hence it is a stronger acid this concept you need to remember so ma'am where can i use this let's start so remember electronegativity higher the acid will be weaker if the electronegativity is lesser the acid will be stronger let us apply this trick and see so let me rub this and use this trick here basically i have let us go from left to right in the periodic table that's one i'll i'll take an example starting from top to bottom in a periodic table this is better students top to bottom in a periodic table that is in a group so in group 17 are the halogens which are highly electronegative correct what is the first halogen fluorine let me write in the center fluorine chlorine bromine iodine now the hydrides of this hf hcl hbr and hi now when they ask you among hf and hi which is a weak acid and which is a stronger acid remember hf is a weaker acid hi is a stronger acid why as i said more the electronegativity stronger is the bond when the bond is stronger it is very difficult to release this h plus and it is ah, weaker acid once again higher the electronegativity it is difficult to remove this h plus and release this h plus and hence it is weaker acid here electronegativity is it is less so the bond is weak i can easily release this h plus it is stronger acid now let us draw the structures and see right so now i have come to an understanding that hf is a weaker acid uh, compared to hi so when i take hf let us draw like this and see now hf is this molecule hcl is one more molecule hbr is one more molecule and hi is one more molecule now there is an overlap of one hydrogen and a smaller lobe of fluorine isn't it p orbital of fluorine now hydrogen is again uh, the same chlorine is little bit bigger than the fluoride ion which i saw when i take hbr this is little bit bromide as little bit bigger than the hcl when i take hi hydrogen is here okay hydrogen should not become bigger hydrogen smaller atom iodine is much bigger compared to this so as we go from left to right in the periodic table or sorry as we go from top to bottom in the periodic table the size of the atom as the number of shells increases the size of the atom also increases now here what happened what is the overlap here there is s orbital overlap with how many there is s orbital overlap with 2 sp 3 hybrid orbitals here there is high s orbital overlap with 3 sp3 orbitals here there is one s orbital with 4 sp3 orbitals here there is one s orbital with 5 sp3 orbitals now what is happening here electron density is decreasing when the electron density is decreasing what will happen to the bond strength that also decreases correct when the bond strength decreases what will happen to the bond length it increases so one more clue which i am telling remember students so here because of this difference in overlap as the size is increasing it can easily release this h plus ions right so one more trick which i have to study in trick 4 remember let me summarize this three important things electronegativity higher bond stronger is a bond stronger bond when the bond is stronger what is the type of acid it is a weak acid next other way round electronegativity is less what will happen to the bond it is a weaker bond what will happen to the acidity it is a strong acid next thing 
as the electron density as we have seen in the last case electron density what will happen in the electron density electron density reduces when electron density reduces what what is happening in that case bond strength bond strength also reduces during this process what happens in the bond strength reduces the most important concept bond length increases so this is one more trick you have to remember right so this is one this is two this is three that's the reason we always say among this hf is less acidic than H hcl so hf is a weak acid hcl is a strong acid students so hope your concept is clear now so which is a weak acid which is strong acid based on the electronegativity concept i have i try to explain you all i think it is clear please rewind the video and watch it again right let me come back and meet meet you with the next trick that is trick number 5 right next students let us come back and do the trick 5 very important again it is a general organic chemistry trick let's see suppose in the exam they have given you uh, questions based on stability so which is more stable which is less stable basically in organic chemistry this comparative study or they is going to ask you comparative study which is more uh, mag which is magnetic uh, behavior or which is more acidic which is less acidic which is more stable which is less stable so such things you should not neglect right so stability questions basically i am going to give you a trick how to solve the if the question is given of if they ask you a stability order of carbo or carban ion i'll teach you this next i'll be teaching you how how will you solve the questions which are related to carbo cation then i'll teach you the um, listen how to calculate the stability when they ask you regarding free radicals right let us see this so whenever you have a stability or question based on stability of carbon ion right let us take that so your trick 5 includes stability of carbon ion stability of carbon ions carbon ions ions right so what are carbon ions carbon ion carbon ions are nothing but negatively charged species so one trick i can give you in this remember but there is one small change in the order also that also you need to just check so always remember in carbon ion when okay when remember this trick students when s character s character increases of hybrid orbitals remember the stability of carbon ion also increases that means s character increases that means once again stability of carbon ion also increases if i have to speak in this term just see sp is sp hybridized is more compared to sp2 it is more compared to sp3 in what terms in terms of stability this is one concept let us understand this right ma'am why did you write this so basically when i have to speak about sp in sp hybridization what is the percentage of s character let us write that so note the students first of all s character increases stability of carbon ion also increases so here maximum s character is sp so as i said what is that thing sp percentage in sp s percentage is 50% correct yes so in sp s percentage is s character is how much 50% then when i take sp2 hybridization s character is how much it is nothing but 33% s character is 33% so when i take sp3 what is the s character s character is nothing but 25% so which one is s character more s character is more in this that's why i said more of the s character more is the stability of carbon ion there is a concept so sp then comes sp2 then comes spt hybridized carbon ions that is what is important but there is one order which you should remember in trick 5 what is that just see this is how this is where they want to ask whenever i see the stability of carbon ions in the order given here in the exam suppose if they ask you if they give you ch3 1 ch3 ch2 minus is one more ch3 one is primary one is secondary minus and one more is tertiary sir tertiary carbon ion if they give you like this if they ask you what is the order i have to say earlier i said 
higher the s character more is the <coughs> stability of the carbon ion that is sp first sp2 second sp3 third right now aromatic carbon again again that's different concept that's again more stable aromatic carbon is more stable rather now among these if they give if i have to say the highly stable carbon ion is this so methyl is more stable than this one methyl then propyl then tertiary primary secondary tertiary mom you said earlier it is different now just see here the main reason for this is so remember in methyl what is uh, this uh, thing what is the most important thing here if i have to see we have less electron releasing groups what is this effect it's nothing but plus i effect so plus i effect is very less right what is electron releasing group it's nothing but methyl but when i come to tertiary what is happening here you have plus i effect more electron donating groups are more so what will it do it will create instability to this molecule instability to this molecule that's why this is unstable but here less electron releasing groups or electron donating groups so plus i effect also is less and hence it is stable so you need to remember this this is where they going to ask you normally as the s character increases the order of stability of the carbon ion would be sp sp2 and sp3 but here when it is give this order is given remember because of the less electron releasing groups here it is stable but in tertiary because of the more electron releasing groups it is not stable it creates instability because it keeps donating electrons donating electrons to the carbon ion already it is electron rich species again it keeps donating so it is instable so this is your trick 5 students let's come back and do trick 6 now let's come back and do the trick 6 that is stability of carbocation so in the earlier video we have seen the stability of carbon ion that is electron rich species they have excess of electrons they are rich in electrons now when it comes to carbocation how do we represent carbocation it's nothing but c plus so in the exam if they ask you what is the stability of the given this one there you find a carbocation what what factor should you remember what what tricks you have to remember just see students always remember the stability of carbocation when does it increase remember the first concept more electron releasing groups or electron donating groups so if more electron releasing groups are attached to c plus what will happen more stability this is one concept so as there is lot of electron releasing means there lot of electron uh, density around the c plus that is what it wanted isn't it right so that's the reason what is the order tertiary is more stable than secondary carbocation more stable than primary carbocation more stable than methyl carbocation this is the order so this is highly stable highly stable carbocation this is less stable carbocation what is the reason students because there are three alkyl groups which are donating or releasing electron electrons or electron density is more so remember this trick very important more the electron releasing groups more is the stability done next thing if you have to speak about for let me take one more example let me erase this hope you have noted it yes so now in the second thing in the stability of carbocation you have to remember this suppose they ask you among this one and among this compound which is more stable or if they ask you there is this compound and without aromaticity this carbocation which is more stable they ask you remember one important clue the element or the compound where adjacent adjacent carbon carbon pi bond so whenever there is adjacent carbon carbon pi bond this one 
carbon carbon pi bond if it is there it will stabilize the carbocation that's one more clue once again what should you remember here adjacent carbon carbon pi bond what does it do it will will stabilize carbocation it will stabilize carbocation remember the students carbocation so where is the pi bond here here so this is more stable than this where is the pi bond here this is more stable than this this is very important concept which you have to remember in terms of carbocation first would be tertiary secondary and uh, tertiary secondary and if i have to say primary and then methyl but here in this case if i have to see wherever there is carbon carbon pi bond that will stabilize the carbocation so here there is a pi bond here there is a pi bond so this is more stable compared to this where there is no pi bond yes students now let us do one more thing in this suppose in the carbocation concept only if they ask you which is more stable for example c part they have given you this is one carbocation and they have asked you this is nh2 and there is proton right so plus one more there's one chlorine atom 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 and this is plus and one more that they have asked you which is more stable among these two always remember next clue which you have to remember wherever adjacent atoms adjacent atoms with lone pair adjacent atoms with lone pair in which atom lone pair are there here in which element not atom which uh, which compound lone pair are there here which uh, which uh, compound lone pairs are there yeah if i have to see <coughs> yes this one so wherever adjacent atoms with lone pairs will stabilize lone pairs will stabilize carbocation so you have to remember three tricks first one more of the electron releasing groups more will be the stability of the carbocation so tertiary more stable than secondary secondary than primary then methyl second concept adjacent carbon carbon pi bond also will stabilize carbocation so wherever there is pi bond you can say it is more stable next thing adjacent atoms with lone pair also will stabilize carbocation so which has lone pair in these two yes this one so this is less stable than this here among these two this has so this is more stable than this carbocation so this is how you have to remember the stability of carbocation students let us come back and do trick 6 that is in free radicals yes students yes so trick 7 in the free radical stability let's come back and see the trick 7 that is stability of free radicals so till now we have seen stability of carbanion we have seen stability of carbocation now we are going to see the stability of free radical so how does the order follow remember uh, so whenever i take free radicals methyl free radical is less stable than ethyl free radical less stable than propyl free radical less stable than secondary and then comes the tertiary free radical let us see what is the reason so always remember whenever we speak about primary free radical right so methyl this is primary then primary free radical why because there are two hydrogens in one methyl group okay so in primary free radical the how many alkyl groups are there there is only one alkyl group correct now in secondary there are or if i have to say primary free radical okay so one alkyl group present in this so when i take the secondary alkyl group it has how many free radical how many alkyl groups two attached to this now when i take the stability of the uh, tertiary they, there are three alkyl groups so you have to remember first important thing the stability of the carbon radical it increases with increase in number of alkyl groups remember once again stability of stability this is important you have to remember stability of carbon radicals how on what it depends upon depends on 
depends on number of alkyl groups so here number of alkyl groups are more in which one in tertiary right right yes. now you have to remember as the number of alkyl group increases carbon radical what will happen it is stabilized more more and more due to what which effect is here this is plus i effect plus i effect so when plus i effect is there what will happen number of hyper conjugated structures and also increases the yes, students yes so that is the reason once again among all these stability of free radicals most important tertiary free radical is more stable than methyl what is the reason two things first more of electron releasing groups so stability of carbon radical depends on number of alkyl if the alkyl groups are more stability is also more remember so in free radical case here there is plus i effect which is shown as well as hyper conjugated structures number of hyper conjugated structures also are more yes students that's why the order here what should i remember stability of free radicals order which i have to remember concept is number of alkyl group should be more so tertiary is more stable than secondary more stable than primary which is more stable than methyl free radical this is a concept reason is here in tertiary you have plus i effect more when the plus i effect is more that means more of electron releasing groups even the number of hyper conjugating structures also more this is your free radical so i have shown you i have shown you the stability of carbo cation stability of carbanion stability of uh, which one free radicals also now let me come back and show you the next important trick that is trick number 8 very interesting how to solve acidity and basicity questions Right. Welcome back, students. Let's come back and solve the trick eight. Right. So here till now we have done the stability of carbocation, carbanion, free radicals. I've taught you what is SNLTS. Then I've you know different different types of questions. Now let us come back and do most important that is how to solve the acidity and basicity type of questions. Most maximum I've seen most of the JE papers, the NEET papers have asked us. Now when an acidity based question is given to you. you have to remember five important criteria for that let's see so what are the tricks to remember in acidity questions whether it is more acidic less acidic or what right so here acidity based questions what is the trick you have to remember keep noting it students always remember the first what are the five things right the first thing which you should remember is acidity is directly proportional to electronegativity first concept right if i have to see the order for example electronegativity means tendency to attract the shared pair of electrons yes right so when i have to see the order just see ch4 is less acidic than nh3 less acidic than water less acidic than hf now see here i can directly show you the example here just see here i said acidity is directly related to electronegativity among all these now hydrogen is one so the carbon is one nitrogen is one then oxygen is one then fluorine is one yes students yes among all these which is a highly a highly electronegative atom fluorine is a highly electronegative atom isn't it that's why higher the electronegativity stronger is the acidity means higher is the acidity that means among all these hf is more acidic than ch4 why because electronegativity is more in fluorine compared to oxygen first trick next important thing next important trick which you should remember is acidity is directly proportional to anionic size is yes, students next thing keep noting it i said first acidity is directly proportional to electronegativity next concept is let me erase this acidity is directly proportional to anionic size anionic size let me take the order hf is less acidic than hcl less acidic than hbr less acidic than hi now see the concept students among all these hydrofluorine chlorine bromine and iodine which sizes 
larger which atomic size this is smaller in atomic size atomic size and this is larger in atomic size larger in atomic size right now as a as we go from top to bottom number of shells increases and the size of the atom also increases right now i said acidity is directly related to anionic size so among these two which is a bigger size anionic size is which one i minus is high larger in atomic radius than f minus so which will be more more acidic hi will be more acidic so since i minus is greater in atomic radius than fluorine hi is is a stronger acid than hf remember this second concept so first concept is acidity directly proportional to electronegativity acidity directly proportional to anionic size next trick we'll see students right there is a third one in acidity what is the third one order of acidic character what is the order right sp greater than sp2 greater than sp3 what is this basically this applies to an atom that is losing hydrogen if i have to take the example right so ch3 ch3 less in terms of the double bond ch2 double bond ch2 less than the triple bond remember this students so order of acidity is the third concept which you have to remember single bond less acidic than double bond less acidic than triple bond yes this is this is nothing but the property of losing h plus ions isn't it right let us see the next fourth trick in fricate that is means the fourth concept which you have to remember in acidity questions always remember whenever electron releasing groups or electron donating groups are present <coughs> if the electron releasing groups are more acidity will be less yes so electron releasing groups are more acidity will be less electron withdrawing groups are more acidity will be more yes students remember this yeah right so what should you should remember whenever there are electron releasing groups or electron donating groups the acidity decreases means what will happen to the basic city basic city it's opposite nothing but basicity increases this is what you have to remember as a fifth trick then now next fourth trick sorry fifth one acidity is directly proportional to resonance is directly proportional to resonance by stabilizing of a minus that means so here what you should remember when i take both like let us take me I take one example there is one alcoholic group here there is one acidic carboxylic group here where resonance is observed resonance is observed in this case so alcohols when i have to say they are less acidic than acids done students so acidity is directly related to resonance here resonance is observed so hence it is more acidic than alcohols so alcohols are less acidic right students i think i have told you all the five uh, tricks what you should remember i'm summarizing it in trick 8 acidity is directly proportional to electronegativity it's directly proportional to anionic size it uh, if the electron releasing groups are there the acidity it decreases if electron withdrawing groups are there acidity increases last but not the least acidity is directly proportional to resonance right students now let's come back and do the basicity based questions suppose in the exam they are asking you basicity questions very important so basicity questions there are different tricks again which i'll be telling you in trick 9 students 
welcome to next trick that is trick 9 here in this trick what type of questions can you solve right how to solve questions based on basicity if they ask you which is more basic which is less acidic or if they ask you which is less less basic which is more acidic so acidic already i have given you a clue in the last trick that is trick number eight now we'll see how to solve questions based on basicity so here basically i'll be teaching you which is directly related which is uh, inversely related right so here most important thing let us categorize the whole concept into means different different tricks the first trick about basicity that is basicity always increases when does it increase it increases with increase in negative charge that is the first concept which you have to remember when the negative charge increases the basicity increases for example if i have to take nh3 nh2 sorry nh 1 2 3 4 5 6 and negative charge is 2 minus next nh2 1 2 3 4 negative charge is 1 minus now if i have to see according to this i said basicity increases with increase in negative charge in which one negative charge is more first comes the negative charge is maximum in this first next negative charge is this more now least is this so what is the order if i have to take yes yes students the order would be which is more basic if i have to see i have to see whichever is more negative charge so in this first case nh 1 2 3 4 5 6 2 minus is greater it means is more basic than nh 2 which has one negative charge which is more basic than nh3 which doesn't have negative charge so this is more basic or most basic this is least basic in nature so the first concept which you should remember in basicity is basicity increases with increasing in negative charge so wherever you see negative charge increase immediately you will put that is more basic in nature now let us come back and do the next thing so in again in trick 9 one more concept about basicity yes next thing that is more unstable uh, means if i have to speak in terms of stability right student right uh, so okay. let me a little bit change the term and tell you lower charge density one more thing you have to remember in terms of basicity questions lower the charge density then what will happen with stability i just little bit i have changed more will be the stability I'll explain you with an example. Then what will happen? If the charge density is lower, the basicity also will be lower. Lower the basicity. Okay. Yes, students. Remember, lower the charge density, more will be the stability. If it is lower charge density, more will be the, uh, sorry, lower will be the basicity. Right. That means if I have to take an example, let me take an example and I'll tell you. Resonance stabilized. Just say students. about this so note this first of all lower charge density means it is more stabilized if it is more stabilized it is the least basic in nature so i have taken an example let us draw the structure and see so i said resonance stabilized amines are less basic in nature right so let's see let us draw taking this as an example for the second category so what did i say resonance stabilized amines if i take one example non benzene ring where amines i said so nh lone pair then this is resonance stabilized one more nh2 one more which doesn't show any resonance I said resonance stabilized amines are less basic in nature. So among all these, which is resonance stabilized? This one. Here it is less basic. Then again, the next amine is this, which is again, here in this case, there is no resonance shown because of the absence of pi bonds. That's why it is more basic. 
let us write that first of all i said resonance stabilized means a less basic so here the uh, p k h value how much is it 0.78 here p k h value is how much 4.6 here the p k h value is 11.2 so which is resonance stabilized this one hence this is least basic so in the exam paper is this is more basic so in the exam paper the first thing you'll see if it is resonance stabilized it is least basic in nature so what was the earlier concept which i taught you if the negative charge is more then it is highly basic second concept i said if it is resonance stabilized it is least basic if there is no resonance it is more basic yes students now let us come and see the next concept in basicity yes students yes so right so important thing here uh, it is c part isn't it right always remember resonance and inductive effect what is the effect on resonance they reduce basicity if a particular compound <coughs> shows a resonance as well as inductive effect the basicity is reduced yes next next important thing basicity basicity i was forgot to put i here it increases with with which one decreasing s character remember this this is one more concept if the s character decreases that means in which one in which one students it is nothing but sp3 so basicity it increases with decrease in s character now i said sp3 25% is s character in sp2 33% in sp2 is 50% so wherever basicity means if the s character is less basicity will be more in that right students so with this one important key thing which you have to remember yes students i am writing the keyword remember students yes in trick 9 what is that i am writing in bo, uh, inverted commas note it yes students the stronger the acid the stronger the acid what will be the thing the weaker the conjugate base this is one important concept conjugate base you should remember next one the weaker the acid weaker the acid the stronger the conjugate base remember the students very very important thing for the exam stronger the acid weaker is a conjugate base weaker the acid stronger is a conjugate base let me come back and meet you with the next trick so we'll summarize the acidic and the basic character with by learning the order in the trick 9 so this is the order students remember always this is more acidic than means alkynes are more acidic than alkenes which are more acidic than alkenes this is more acidic than acids which are more acidic than alcohols which are more acidic than water more acidic than h more acidic than nh3 which is more acidic than an hydrocarbon if i have to see the basic nature remember r more acidic than sorry more basic than nh2 more i think i have to uh, yes so ch minus see the acidic hydrogen then r o minus more acidic than HO minus more acidic than phenoxide, more acidic than 
R C O. So more basic than more basic than I'm sorry more basic than R C O minus. So this is the concept of trick nine. Let me come back and meet you with the trick ten. Students, let's start off with the trick ten. Right. So till now we have done all the nine tricks based on organic chemistry. physical chemistry as well as inorganic chemistry so i'm more concentrating on the organic chemistry students so any doubt please put it in the comment section right so please don't waste your time as we are in lockdown period let us utilize the time properly right so now when we do the trick 10 right let's see what is trick 10 explaining us hope uh, all these tricks are very useful for you all and i'm i also expect and hope that you will be use, utilizing these during your examination because in the board exam in the, sorry in the jee or neat examination time is a constraint isn't it right so in the trick 10 let's write what is important and let's learn now first here today i'll be discussing about something called alkene stability so whenever a question is given based on alkene stability what should you remember right so here the trick 10 is about which one students so let us write that i'm talking about alkene stability okay so what you are supposed to learn in this just see here you have to remember the trick is greater the number of attached greater the number of attached alkyl groups so if the number of alkyl groups are more greater number of alkyl groups what is what is more greater is greater is alkene stability remember this so once again greater the number of alkyl groups greater is alkene stability hope you have noted this let me take an example and show you what actually is this how can you apply it in the exam right okay right so here alkene stability i said number of alkyl groups suppose if i have given or they've given me in the exam one example let me see so what is this greater the number of alkyl groups <coughs> greater is alkene stability i have different different examples let's see that suppose i have an example r ch double bond chr let us name this as one one more i have next one r ch double bond ch2 this is two one more example ch2 double bond ch2 this is one more example three next you have one more example that is r2 c double bond ch2 this is four one more example r2 c double bond ch2 this is five r2 c double bond cr2 this is six now the concept is this is given they have asked you write the correct order or in the uh, you know a correct order of stability in the exam now what did i say what is the trick i said i said greater the number of alkyl groups greater would be its stability so let us apply that trick in this so uh, here in this first thing how many alkyl groups are there two here in the second number of alkyl groups are one here no alkyl groups so whichever doesn't have alkyl groups it is least stable number of alkyl groups are two so here two here one here no Here two, here two plus one three, here two plus two four. Yes. So which is a uh, alkene uh, students which is highly stable? This one, as I said, number of alkyl groups are more. Uh, the particular alkene will be more and more stable. So first order, first one. What should I write? Yes, students. The first one I have to write it as six is highly stable, greater stability. Correct. After six are uh, is uh, stable, which is the one which is this one. Then comes five. this is more stable then next comes your four correct then comes your next alkene here how many are there two fourth alkene also has two first alkene also has two so almost four and one are equal stability both are equal that is one which is greater now here one more thing you have to remember In the first example, always trans is greater stability than cis. This you have to remember. So one, one. After that, next comes the single one that is two. 
the least st stable one is 3 so remember students this is a trick which i am going to i told you in when when they have asked you alkene stability more number of alkyl groups more will be the alkene stability so here four alkyl groups so i took six then here there are three alkyl groups then i took five there are two alkyl groups i took four <coughs> then one also has two alkyl groups but here trans is more stable than cis then I took two because there are second compound, second alkene because there is one alkyl group and the last is three. Hope you have understood students. This is your trick 10. Let us come back and do trick 11. Right. Welcome students. Let us start off with trick 11 now. So what did I say in the earlier trick? More number of alkyl substituents are there. More will be the stability of the alkene. Correct. Now let me take it to the next concept now. Suppose here alkyl substituents if they are there so okay alkyl substituents that is the methyl group a basic thing if i take alkyl substituents they will stabilize the double bond this is the concept stabilize double bond this is what we have studied now suppose if the same alkyl substituents they will also destabilize the double bond when it will destabilize destabilize the double bond when when they are they are at cis position when they are at cis to each other cis to each other cis position to each other now what is cis and trans students suppose if there is a double bond like this right now what is cis and trans basically cis and trans let us write cis means <coughs> they are present on the same side of the Car both the carbon same side is cis suppose if it is trans they are present on the opposite side of the double bond right cis means on the same side trans means on the opposite side right now the concept we said if it is in the cis position it will destabilize it let us take the example and see right so let me erase this so yes now they are giving me different different examples one is isobutene they will ask which is more stable they will give you trans to butene is one more example which which they ask you to test then cis to butene is one more example and they are given you one butene is one more example okay done so here when they ask you this example first draw the structure and see what is what thing you should remember in your mind you have to remember that if the alkyl substituents are at the cis position in the double bond they are going to destabilize so whichever is the uh, cis this one uh, if the it is in the alkene cis carbon means the cis position then you can put it as a least stable let us write the structure isobut but means four carbons one c double bond c <coughs> 3 CH3 CH3 H and H this is isobutene isobutene okay isobutene done next is trans to butene 1 double bond 1 2 3 4 trans means I said it is on the opposite direction CH3 CH3 H and H trans to butene now I have to write cis to butene c double bond c I said in cis the alkyl groups are present on the c on, on the same side of both the carbons hydrogen and hydrogen now I have to write one butene <coughs> one c double bond c ch2 ch3 1 2 3 4 so remaining I'll fill it as hydrogens done now see students careful now which is cis position right cis means which one i said it is present on the same side so this is cis so this will be last let us number this is one two three and four correct yes now what is the first important thing order when i say one isobutene it is more stable order one is more stable than two this is more stable than three this is more stable than four so that is the trick right now let us come back and do next trick that is trick number 12 right uh, so when it comes to trick 12 let's see what are we going to learn here again one more stability i'm going to uh, teach as i said alkene stability in trick 10 alkyl substituent stability uh, in alkenes again trick 11 and now important thing one more let us write what is the trick stability of the negative charge is opposite to basicity so one more trick which i'm going to teach you is stability of negative charge is opposite 
to basicity oh wow nice opposite to basicity how can i understand how can i remember this so here stability of negative charge so a negative charge is nothing but an anion isn't it so how are they going to how are we going to remember this in the exam suppose in the uh, question in the uh, entrance, entrance exam questions suppose if they're giving you uh, um, compare the order of stability with all the negative charges given means I give, i'll show you with an example negative charges given you have to judge which is least stable and which is more stable right let me take so hope you have noted the students let me erase this now and take the exam right so i am erasing this done next i have to take an example suppose there is there are examples like this now what is the concept i have to see stability of the negative means the most stable one will be that which has the negative charge negative charge is fine but important concept here is electronegativity so what should you remember so after taking that let me write and one more trick what is that as electronegativity i'm sorry students let me erase this as electronegativity increases stability of stability of anion also increases remember this as electronegativity increases stability of the anion also increases yes students done so here let me take these two tricks and apply it suppose they have given me an example like this one example is what oh minus okay oh minus is one next they have given me nh2 next f minus then ch3 minus now tell me based on that as i said as electronegativity increases where does it increase basically electronegativity in a periodic table electronegativity it increases where in a periodic table from left to right in a period from left to right in the period that is electronegativity increases isn't it now in the left to right in the period let us see which comes first in left to right suppose carbon atomic number six carbon after carbon atomic number six then comes nitrogen atomic number seven then comes fluorine atomic number uh, so then comes uh, then comes oxygen atomic number eight then comes fluorine <laughs> right students so i know at the electronegativity according to this trick as electronegativity increases stability of anion increases so i know in the periodic table left to right in the periodic table <coughs> electronegativity increases isn't it right so which element now fluorine atomic number first comes fluorine highly electronegative so now uh, let me write the order first normally it comes carbon six then comes nitrogen this is seven then comes oxygen eight then comes fluorine so left to right in the periodic table which is highly electronegative fluorine is highly electronegative so if it is this is highly electronegative which will be if it is highly electronegative what will happen to the anion this will be this anion will be more stable correct yes now this one is the first element this is less electronegative compared to fluorine less electronegative so this is less stable enough this is how you have to judge the question so this is your trick 12 remember as the stability of the negative charge is opposite to basicity next as the electric uh, based on the electronegativity if the electronegativity increases as i've shown you here stability of anion also increases let us come back and do trick number 13 students welcome back again let us start off with the trick number 13 hope you have seen all the tricks till 12 keep applying it in your exam i promise you'll be able to solve the question very fast right so when it comes to trick 13 the trick which i'm going to teach now is remember just see greater the branching so this concept i think you've studied in the first chapter that is halo alkenes halo arenes but basically when we speak about hydrocarbons we speak about this yes right so greater the branching what is what will be the what which will be lesser remember the branching is greater lower the boiling point this is one which you've studied why this is happening because here this concept i have to explain this see when the branching is increasing what will happen gradually it will start forming loops like this one one inside the other one inside the other it starts becoming spherical so when it becomes spherical what will happen to the surface area see when it is like this straight the surface area is plain means it is more 
when when it is a ball what will happen in the surface area the surface area decreases right so greater the branching lower will be the boiling point why because molecule becomes molecule becomes spherical molecule becomes spherical this is fine when it is becoming spherical what uh, what will happen then in, automatically there is decrease in surface area just now i said when it is spherical the surface area overall surface area just for a ball it will be like this isn't it for a perifide the surface area is so much but for a ball the surface area will become less so decrease in surface area <coughs> for which one for intermolecular inter molecular attachment or intermolecular attractions done so i have to explain this with an example isn't it so what should i remember greater the branching lower will be the boiling point why this is the reason surface area will be less and intermolecular attraction <coughs> will be uh, like you know for it will decrease as in the whole molecule becomes spherical and intermolecular force of attraction also will be to the minimum distance right right so with <coughs> let us take an example let me, let me rub this now so then i have to explain this concept suppose they have given me an example uh, one two three four examples we'll take the first example is hexane is one example then i'll be writing the isomers of that in the same way just see i'll be writing two methyl pentane right done students then i'll take an example that is three methyl pentane one more example 2 comma 2 dimethyl butane first as soon as this is given in the exam don't get confused what you should do you have to write the structure of that and see whichever branching is there whichever where, wherever molecule has more branching then automatically you will put an option or you will tick an option saying that because this has more branching uh, the boiling point will be less let us write suppose if i have to write hexane example so hexane is how many carbons six carbons hydrocarbon there is an alkane so ch3 one and one two 3, 4, 5, 6. The sixth carbon is this. This is done, students. Now, 2 methyl pentane. So, at the first is CH3. Then you have, at the second carbon, you have methyl group. Then uh, 3, then 4, then 5. So, this is 2 methyl pentane. The second carbon, this is 1 carbon, this is 2 carbon. Done. Now, I have to write 3 methyl pentane. Again, pentane only. So, the first carbon, so CH3, this is 2 this is 3, this is 4, this is 5, this is pentane. Now, which position? It is 3 methyl. The third position that we have methyl group. Done. Now, I have to write 2, 2 dimethyl. 2, 2 dimethyl butane is the example given to me. So, 2, 2. So, first of how many? What is the parent chain? It is but. I have to write but. It's okay. First is CH3. 2. This is the second carbon. This is the third carbon. So, but is over. Now, they say 2, 2 dimethyl, right? So, 1, 2, 3, right? Now, this is 4. But means 4 carbons. Now, this is the first card, first uh, this one position. They say 2, 2 dimethyl. So, if I have to take, here there is one more methyl group. Here there is one more methyl group. Done, students? Right. So, here 2, 2 dimethyl butane. Now, see which has the more branching among all these Yes, so the more branching is this. This is more branching, correct? Now, next, what is the next branching? This, this is the next branching. What is the next branching? Then this is this one. Then which is the next branching? Means branching, there is no branching in this, correct? Now, according to the trick which I have given you, I said more of the branching, less will be the boiling point. If I have to write, let us prove that in the form of writing the values. Suppose if I take hexane, the boiling point of hexane is 69 degrees centigrade. If I have to take 2 methyl pentane, the boiling point is 60 degrees centigrade. If I have to take 3 methyl pentane, the boiling point is 53 degrees centigrade. And suppose if I take 2 2 dimethyl butane, which is a branch structure, the boiling point is 50 degrees centigrade. Now you will see, students, more of the branching boiling point will be less because the surface area is less. So, what will I write among all these? Let us name this as 1, this is name this as 2, this is 3, this is 4. So, which has less? 4 has less boiling point than 3. 
3 has less boiling point than 2, 2 has less boiling point than 1. So, this is the trick 13. You have to remember more of the branching or greater is the branching. More of the branching, the boiling point will be very, very less. Yes, students, hope this is clear to you all. Right, let me come back and meet with the next trick. That is trick number 14. Now, let us come back and do the trick number 14. Again, I'm going to explain about the, okay, uh, giving, I'll be giving you a trick for solving stability questions, <laughs> right? So, what is the trick about? Now, 14 trick, now I'm going to give, uh, let's see, based on polarizability, right? Now, stability of anion, right? The negative ion. It increases as we go down the group. This is the concept. Now, what is it said? When we go from top to bottom in a group, the stability of anion increases it seems. Why this increases based on what it is? Nothing but it is based on the polarizability, right? I think you know what is polarizability, students. So, recollect where we have studied this polarizability. I think we have studied this in Fajan's rule also, isn't it? <laughs> we have said if the cation uh, is a smaller or if the anion is larger. So, I think you recollect and tell me polarizability or polarization. Yes, students. Okay. I'll only give you the exam or I'll only give you the definition. Polarizability, we, we speak basically in terms of the cation and the anion. So, it is a measure. Means how we measure it. We, we measure how an electron cloud is distorted in electric field. Polarizability is nothing but it's a measure of distortion of an electron cloud by a, uh, in an electric field. Yes, students, you have an cation. Suppose if I take Na+, plus, you have an anion, chloride ion in this way. How this drags the uh, anionic cloud towards it and finally it forms a bond in this way, right, plus and minus. So, this is polarizability. So, we said, suppose in the exam, they have given us polarizability. What is the order of this examples given? So, what will I remember? St this stability of the anion, it increases down the group. They have given me different examples. Now, with this clue, I'll solve that stability question. Suppose they have given me different examples like this. SCH is one example and one more. Sulfur and H, one more. O and H, one more. So, now immediately I can apply. Now, as soon as this question is given, remember this is a negative charge. That is an anion. Done. After that, you will remember, you will just see whether it is in a period or in a group. Now, here when I see the uh, elements, first oxygen. Correct? 8 is atomic number. Then sulfur 16. Yes. So, how is it going? It is going from top to bottom. So, first comes in the group oxygen. Next comes sulfur. Then next comes selenium. So, which is at the top? This is at the top. Isn't it? Of the periodic table. This is at the uh, bottom. In the periodic table that is in a group. Yes. Now, according to this, what should I do? Take the order. I said first the order will be OH minus is less stable than sulfur, is less stable than selenium hydride. So, this is the order. So, from top to bottom in a group, top to bottom in a group, polarizability, based on the polarizability, I'll say the one which is at the bottom is most stable. This is most stable. So, what can I write? So, the top ones, whatever are there, let me erase that example. The top ones, whichever are there in the periodic table, if it is a negative ion, so, the top one that is O H minus is least stable. Then comes your SH. Then comes selenium hydride. At the bay, this is at the low bottom, isn't it? So, this is most stable anion. This you have to remember. Right? Now, one more trick, one more we will do based on the ionization energy. Right, students? Now, once again, I am writing one more. Same thing. In the same trick 14, what is that? Based on ionization energy. So, I am going to take the concept as they will give you trend based on ionization energy, i.e. Right. So, what am I trying to tell you? Stability of anion. Stability of 
anion when does it increase it increases when electron withdrawing substituents are added increases when electron withdrawing groups are added this is one more thing which you should remember if the electron withdrawing groups are added automatically the stability of anion increases how can i apply this in this uh, in the exam right so i said one thing one based on electronegativity as electronegativity increases in a period stability increases left to right if anion stability increases top to bottom based on polarizability now the stability of anion also increases when you are adding, adding electronegative groups let's take an example and see suppose in this example i have so this is electronegative element yes how many are there one one more i'll take there are two electronegative atoms three electronegative atoms no electronegative atoms now what did i say if the electron withdrawing groups are more anion stability increases so which will have maximum stability let us number this one two three and four which has more electronegative atoms first thing the uh, the one which is having more electron withdrawing groups so here this has the first preference because three are there this will become the second preference two are there this will become the third preference three one is there this will become the last preference that is there is no so how will i write the order among all those four is less stable than one which is less stable than two which is less stable than three so which is more stable among all those third is a more stable one because the electronegative or electron withdrawing groups are more in this which is electron withdrawing group it is nothing but f or the electronegative element that is f so in this example there are three fluoride ions in this example there is no fluoride ions so more number of electronegative elements are there in this more will be the anion stability yes students done yes now let us come back and do one more trick right students let us come back and do that is trick number 15 so in the earlier trick i think i have explained you about the stability of anions based on three important concepts what are they one would be the based on the electronegativity one based on the polarizability next based on the electronegative atom which is present now next would be based on the hydration right by um, based on the uh, not hydration i'm sorry based on the hybridization so once again let me just write the trick remember stability of anion increases again i'm writing increases when it increases as important it has more s character this is one more thing which you have to remember students more the s character more would be the stability of the anion right so let us take one example and see suppose they have given hope you have noted this i'll erase this and take an example they have given me three examples in the question paper what are they i have to remember if they're given based on the hybridization how will you judge their stability this is the concept what did i say whichever has more s character that will have more stability that is a concept right so if i take an example of this there is they have given me one anion this one more anion is there given to me this way that one is single bond one is triple bond one more anion given to me is a double bond right students now we very well know if it is single bond what is the type of hybridization sp3 if it is triple bond what is the type of hybridization sp if it is double bond what is the type of hybridization sp2 i very well know according to the trick more the s character more will be the stability of the anion correct now in sp3 hybridization what is the s percentage character s character is 25 percent 75 percent is p, p, p character if i take sp s character is 50 percent here if i take s character is 33 percent now i said which is more this is more 
okay let us write the number 1 2 3 now let us again come back to the trick more the s character more will be the stability of the anion so which has more s character 2 has more s character which is uh, which is the next one uh, which is it or we'll write less ones first yes 1 is less than 3 which is less than 2 so 2 is a maximum correct yes so once again students you apply this more the s character more will be the stability of the anion in terms of hybridization now in this the triple bond is <coughs> having the maximum s character so that will be more stable then comes the double bond then comes the single bond done so let us summarize all the stabilities together in trick 15 let's see this so what did i say whenever a question of stability of anion is given to me so just see this remember very important suppose stability of anion concept is given to me i have to remember important three important concepts if i have to say right what are they first thing the stability of anion when does it increase if it, it it increases if all these factors are satisfied what is that if the if from left to right in the periodic table that is in a period what will increase if electro negativity increases automatically the stability of anion increases next concept from top to bottom if anion stability should increase from top to bottom what should increase polarizability should increase if the polarizing character increases that is pulling out the anionic cloud in electric field polarizability it if it increases automatically this stability also increases next if the electron withdrawing groups if i have to say if the electron withdrawing groups increases then automatically the anion stability increases next would be if the percentage of s character if the percentage of s character should be more or less students it should be more if the percentage of s character is more automatically the anion stability also increases so in this if i have to say this which which one is this uh, the triple bond will have it will be more stable triple bonded anion if the anion is there uh, present in the compound which is triple bond triple bond will be first given preference more stable then comes double bond then comes single bond right students now let us come back and do the next trick after anion stability let's come back and learn a different trick that is based on your nucleophiles so let us come and do trick 16 what does it say so here basically when we speak about nucleophiles what are nucleophiles they are basically electron rich species we have three different strong nucleophiles if i have to say uh, weak nucleophiles as well as um, neutral also neutral nucleophiles also right so here i'm talking about strong nucleophiles suppose the trick is if the nucleophile is or stronger nucleophile if they are present in polar solvents okay stronger nucleophiles in polar solvents i will so explain in one of the trick what are polar solvents please go through that video i think it is video number 1 only so i've shown what are polar protic solvents and polar aprotic solvents right so stronger nucleophiles in polar if they are present in polar solvents what is always remember they are going to prefer they prefer or they form what type of products they form elimination products this is what is important remember if the nucleophile is strong enough and if it is present in a polar solvent they are going to show elimination products so they are going to form elimination products but all other products are also pro pro produced but in different yields but all other products are produced but in different yields right so in different yields means different productivity will be there but it's going to prefer el elimination products only so this is your trick 16 students i think this will be very easy in the exam whenever you see a stronger nucleophile list also have given and whenever you see a polar solvent that also have given then you can say the product 100% will be an elimination product only that yes now let us come back and do trick 17 of a series right so in trick 17 what am i going to learn right i'm giving some uh, formulas here directly which you can apply for solving the numerical in the exam what is this suppose the first one is 
ion ion interaction remember ion ion interaction is inversely proportional to the square of its radius if i have to take the next one ion dipole interaction this is also inversely related to the cube of its radius next one london forces if i have to take london forces the dispersion forces if i have to take it is also inversely related to by 6 r6 if i take dipole 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 it is inversely proportional to the cube of this so this will be very useful students when they give you a numerical you can apply the formula directly yes yes let's come back and do trick number 18 after the stability of the anion i'm going to give you a trick how to solve boiling point questions so basically boiling point melting point all these questions they uh, come frequently isn't it right so in this trick number 18 i'll be teaching about how to solve the different trends in boiling point and so different questions in boiling point so the first trick or uh, we have to first concept which you have to remember in uh, trick 18 that is questions based on boiling point right fine here first thing stronger the forces stronger the forces what will happen in the boiling point higher will be the boiling point stronger the forces higher the boiling point let us take an example and explain what what actually is this so here when i have to speak about forces what are the different types of forces we have we have forces okay let us list up so hope you have noted this let me take the forces now forces are stronger means boiling point will be more right here in goc we have basically studied about different types of forces that is ionic force this is one type of force next type of force which we have studied is dipole dipole forces dipole dipole i'm sure writing in shortcut students forces next type of force which i have studied is london dispersion forces correct students london dispersion forces we have studied london dispersion forces one more type of uh, force which we have studied is hydrogen bonding which is formed between the <coughs> oxygen and the hydrogen present now when i have to speak about ionic forces in where you are going to observe these these you are going to see in salts ionic compounds that is in salts dipole dipole forces where you will see basically you are going to see this in here when carbon is bonded to electronegative atoms means where you will see it's bonded to electron what are the different electronegative atoms like oxygen if it is bonded to nitrogen if it is bonded to chlorine when such carbon is bonded to the electronegative atom then we call dipole dipole forces and london dispersion forces are those basically it is present in all but it's mainly dominant in hydrocarbons hydro dominant in hydrocarbons hydrogen bond i already said now i said among all these the strongest force is what yes students among if i have to see all the this one the ionic forces are the strongest first the next force is hydrogen bonding the next force is dipole dipole forces next force is london dispersion forces these are the weakest forces right now let me write the order the first thing so i said stronger the force more will be the or higher will be the boiling point so the strongest force is ionic force this will have more boiling point next comes hydrogen bonding this will have next boil more boiling point then would be the dipole forces this one and last would be the weak forces which will have less boiling point so if i have to write the boiling point trend what should i remember based on the trick which i have given you right first is ionic forces are stronger and hence will have high boiling point which is greater than hydrogen bonding which is means compared to this this will be a bit lesser then dipole dipole forces then could be dipole dipole forces and 
last would be London forces. So among all those, this will have less boiling point according to the trick which I have given. So you have to remember more the stronger the forces, more would be the boiling point. In the same thing, let us come back and do one more concept that is based on branching. Right? Right. So let us take that. Let us take out this one more concept of boiling point. So here if the number of carbons are increasing now i'm basically talking about concept b of boiling point that is if the number of carbons are increasing ma'am what what carbons basically you're talking about molecules having identical function group just let us say that when there is identical functional group identical functional group okay this is one concept and number of carbon atoms number of carbon atoms are increasing this is one more concept what will happen to the boiling point boiling point also increases so for me i have to remember two things first thing i have to write if the number of carbon atoms are increasing one concept i have to remember and most important it should be identical function group then the boiling point increases so let us come back and write the example for this for this trick too so here i have to keep it in my mind in the earlier this one i have written stronger the forces more is a boiling point here in now i have to remember if the function group is identical and number of carbon atoms are increasing suppose in and they have given me an example one example is butyl amine is one example they have given me one more example propyl amine they have given me one more example ethyl amine okay let us write the structure and see butyl amine means how many carbons four propyl means three ethyl means two amine means nh2 now i said the function group should be same see here am amine is a function group which is similar i also said number of carbon atoms should increase so it is increasing let us write the structure one Two, three, four. This is butyl amine. Propyl amine, one, two, three, and H two. Ethyl amine, one, two, and H two. This is ethyl amine. Now, when I have to number one, two, three, four. Here, one, two, three. Here, one and two. Perfect. Now I said, let us number. So which are which uh, other functional groups same? Yes. Which has number of more carbon, more number of carbon atoms? Here, this is a more number of carbon atoms. So increasing number of carbon atoms, thus that will be more boiling point. So here, if I have to number it, one, two, three. Let us see whether our trick is matching with this or not. Here, butyl amine boiling point is seventy eight degrees centigrade. Here, propyl amine. Boiling point, if I have to see, is 40 degrees centigrade. If I have to take ethyl amine, the boiling point here is only 18 degrees centigrade. Now, you only see students, according to the trick, more number of carbon atoms, more will be the, and more number of carbon atoms and more same uh, function group, more will be the boiling point. So, what is the order I have to write? One, let me erase this. Where will I write? Okay. One will have that is butyl amine according to the order. Butyl amine will have more boiling point than propyl amine, which will have more boiling point than ethyl amine. This is clear, students. Done. This is your uh, uh, boiling point question. Now, in the same boiling point question, one more concept which I'm going to teach is <coughs> concept C. What is that? As branching increases, remember, as branching increases, what will uh, what will increase? MP melting point increases and boiling point decreases. Let us take with an example and see whether I am right or wrong. So as branching increases, melting point increases and boiling point decreases, what I have written, let us justify. Let us take one example and see. If I have a compound like this CH3, CH2, 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 CH3, one more compound which I have with a branch. Now I'm going to compare it with the branching, isn't it? Right, I have taken this compound. So among both of them, which is branching? This is branching. Now if I have to write the data, 
one is melting point data one is boiling point data just now what did i say as the branching increases melting point should be more and boiling point should be less let's see now for this are there any branching here no correct yes now here they're branching yes so when i have to take the values i'm comparing among these only right students here 95 degrees here 98 degrees centigrade boiling point is 69 degrees centigrade this is 50 degrees centigrade see here as the branching increases melting point increases and boiling point decreases please i'm not comparing these two i'm comparing among them only right so this is the concept of boiling point so one concept what did i say i said as the uh, yes, sorry number of carbon atoms increases that's different then i said one more thing the stronger the forces that is also one more i said as a branching increases now let me take one more example with the same thing and see whether i am right or wrong so in the same concept when i have to see the melting point and boiling point suppose <coughs> branching and not branching i said i have an example let us write for c5h12 so c5h12 is a compound which i am going to show it in the different forms of branches first c5h12 one 2, 3, 4, 5. Correct? So, here 5 carbon atoms and how many hydrogen atoms are there? 12 hydrogen atoms are there. Now, next one. 1, 2, 3. Right, students? Let us count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Done. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Done. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Done. This is C5H12. Now, I said <coughs> more of the branching, more will be the boiling point oh, no more will be the melting point and less will be the boiling point but here in this concept i'm only showing based on the surface area right now here what will i write more branching less surface area less bp this is the concept which i'm explaining now when i see the boiling point of this is 36 degrees centigrade if i have to see the boiling point is 27 degrees here the boiling point is 10 degrees now you only judge students earlier it was between the boiling point and the melting point here i am telling you only based on the <coughs> uh, branching so more branching is where observe here next branching is here next branching is here right so more bo branching less boiling point i'm right isn't it so remember this trick students clear so this is how you have to remember the questions based on boiling point let us come back and do the trick 19 till now we have studied the stability of anions questions based on boiling point about sn1 sn2 mechanism now little we'll go into the bond parameters now right so what the bond parameters nothing but the bond order bond length bond enthalpy isn't it right here one trick about bond order what is that remember higher the bond order higher the bond order means what is that it is nothing but more attraction between electrons so bond order more attraction between electrons okay higher the bond order that is more attraction what will be higher higher the stability if the stability is higher what is the advantage remember greater the bond strength greater the bond strength okay what does this all mean let us take an example and see so higher the bond order higher the stability if the stability is higher tightly the bond strength bond will be hold it means it will hold the bond like this let us see simple example i think you've noted this let me erase and write the thing once again i'm repeating higher the bond order higher is the stability greater is a bond strength simple example so when i take nitrogen element example is nitrogen nitrogen all we very well know it has n triple bond n now what is the bond order bond order is nothing but bonds number of bonds one two three so the bond order is three 
If I take oxygen, the bond order is 2. Right. Now see, that's the reason nitrogen, e nitrogen gas, is chemically inert. Remember? Yes. Nitrogen gas is chemically inert. Why it is chemically inert? Because bond, bond as I said, because the bond order is more, the attraction is more, it is highly stable enough. So, that is one uh, trick from my side students. So, remember bond order thing. Let us come back and do one more trick that is based on the bond dissociation enthalpy. So, one more trick, let us come back and do based on bond dissociation energy, right. So, one important thing, suppose I have given you uh, certain examples, right. They have asked you uh, which has uh, or which bond or which will have more bond dissociation energy among the following. One trick you have to remember. See here, higher the S character, higher the S character. If the S character is more, it is very close to the nucleus, isn't it, very tightly held more stronger will be the bond more stronger the bond and what will happen to the bond dissociation energy more bond dissociation energy so once again i am saying higher the s character correct more clo closer it will be if it is more closer more stronger will be the bond if the bond is stronger, I require more energy to break it, doesn't it? So, remember like that. So, as soon as a question based on bond dissociation energy is given to you, what should you remember? You have to check for the S character and give. So, let us take one example and see. Please, uh, I am erasing it, students, note it. Yes. So, here, suppose in my mind, I have bond dissociation energy means S character, I have to see. Let's check. I, they have given me alkane, same story. They have given me alkene. They have given me alkyne. Now we very well know alkane, the type is, what is the type of hybridization here? SP. In alkene, SP2. In alkyne, SP3. Here S character, 50%. Here the S character, 33%. Here the S character, 25%. Now I said wherever there is S character more, the bond dissociation energy will be more. So let me prove that also. Here the bond dissociation enthalpy is 120 kilocalories per mole. I require 120 kilocalories to per mole to break the bond. If I have to take this here, the value is 110 kilocalories per mole. If I have to take this, it is only 105 kilocalories per mole. So, what is the understanding now? More of the S character, more will be the bond dissociation enthalpy. Yes, students, clear? This is your trick 20, which you have to remember for bond dissociation enthalpy. Let's come back and do trick number 21. So, one the same thing I took based on the band, mm, bond param, or parameters only, right. So, I did one question based on uh, bond length. I did one more question based on bond dissociation enthalpy. Now, let us do one more small trick which will be very useful. Nothing students easy. Bond length is inversely related to bond order. Remember this, the bond length increases, bond order decreases. Once again, one more bond enthalpy is inversely related to bond length it's a simple trick i think example not required if you remember these two it's easy if they give you bond length order or if they give you bond order order you can do that next important if they give you bond energy you can predict the bond length order also right students right this is your trick 21 i'll come back and meet you with trick uh, 22 it's uh, interesting where i'll be talking about the conjugate assets so gradually i'm going into the conjugate asset conjugate base all i'm trying to cover all the grade 11th and grade 12th topics which will be very useful for your je as well as neat exams now in trick 22 what am i going to teach today let's see here i'm going to teach you about something related to the leaving group as well as the pka right you very well know k and pka which you which you have studied 
in the equilibrium chapter isn't it so both are inversely related yes let's start here the trick which you have to remember is leaving group ability that means i'll explain with an order also is directly proportional to the pka of conjugate asset okay so let us see what actually is the concept in this we have studied this concept isn't it right here leaving group ability what are the different leaving groups we have good uh, good leaving groups moderate leaving groups as well as poor leaving groups first let me write the order so when it comes to if i say if the leaving group ability if the leaving group go, uh, e ability means if, the, if it is a good leaving group automatically the pka value of the conjugate acid also increases that is a concept yes let's see so iodine is a very good leaving group which is greater value pka means iodine will have a greater pka value then comes bromine then comes chlorine then comes c Okay, R minus OH minus OME minus and R two H CH three R. Okay, right students. Now see what am I trying to tell you? I minus is a good leaving group. Very good leaving group. when it comes to or oh all these are moderate leaving groups moderate leaving groups when i have to take the last batch this is a very poor leaving groups now what did i say for the if the leaving group is good enough its value or the pka value of the conjugate acid will be more so in the exam if they ask you which of these will have more pka values means so you have to search for the good leaving groups the students so this is very important trick which you should remember let me come back and do the trick number 23 so to in trick number 23 you're going to learn about hyper conjugating structures right so you uh, in uh, general organic chemistry and hyper conjugation we have studied maximum mostly the hyper conjugation questions compulsory they'll ask you in the j that is neat so i think the concept of hyper conjugation is clear and you also know what are hyper conjugating structures your students right now here in this trick i'll give you certain important clues where you can directly apply it in the question so remember number of hyper conjugating structures so if number of hyper conjugating structures on what what does it depend means if the number of hyper conjugating structures on is it dependent on the different concepts just see it the number will be directly proportional to number of alpha hydrogens if the number of alpha hydrogens are more in the compound hyper conjugating structures also will be more it is hype number of hyper conjugating structures are also directly proportional to stability they are inversely related to heat of hydration inversely related to heat of hydration they are directly proportional to the polarity they are directly proportional to the dipole moment see how many factors i have given you to directly write and they are inversely related to bond length right ma'am how can i apply this just see suppose there is one question which is given based on hyper conjugation you can directly remember the parameters like number of alpha hydrogens the parameters like stability num uh, polarity dipole moment all these are directly related means if you see the structure and if you, you know how to draw the hyper conjugating structure for that for all those these factors if these are more number of alpha hydrogen is more in the given um, is more in the gi given in the example this will be more if stability is more this if this is more stability will be more if the number of uh, if polarity is more hyper conjugating structures will be more if the dipole moment is more hyper conjugating structures will be more but there it is inversely related to heat of hydration as well as bond length right students so remember this trick very important 23rd trick about hyper conjugation i'll meet you again with more number of tricks keep watching without your support nothing is possible good evening students i think i um, almost a week i'm meeting you all so i was very busy with my schedule so today i'm going to again send you the next video of 
inorganic in 7 days what are we going to learn today so today we are going to learn the 63 facts of inorganic chemistry so mostly these uh, facts you know most of the uh, competitive exams or wherever you go the such particular questions you know the whatever questions are discussed today they will be asking you somewhere or the these questions are repeated so let's learn according to a sequence very clearly and let's note in a book so let's start off with a topic 63 facts of inorganic chemistry right students so take out your book take out your pen and start noting along with me very easy to understand suppose whenever we study about inorganic chemistry what are the different trends we speak about so basically we talk about atomic size density melting point ionization potential boiling point electron affinity electron negativity right so let us learn all the questions which come under these facts right so after this video there will be one more video very interesting that is i'll be discussing about the atomic the different trends of inorganic chemistry where i'll be discussing about all these concepts along with all the variations in shown in the whole of periodic table so basically i've clubbed the periodic table and bought under one platform done so when it comes to facts of inorganic chemistry when i go with atomic size right so the first trend as we know is atomic size so in atomic size what what questions are uh, there let me put one uh, listen for this uh, square box and start so in chem basically in chemistry what is the smallest at uh, atomic size element so let us write smallest I'm for I mean giving you a question based on atomic size. Smallest atomic size element. What is the smallest atomic size element? That is nothing but hydrogen. Let us put in circle. Suppose if I have to take the opposite of this, what is that? Largest atomic size element, largest atomic size element. So what is the largest atomic size element? It is nothing but cesium over smallest and largest. It is easy to remember like this, isn't it? Let us write smallest, largest, smallest, largest like that. Next, after this, again, the concept of smallest. If I have to take the next one, that is the smallest cation, right? I'm writing the same thing here. So if I have to know what is the smallest cation in inorganic chemistry, smallest cation is H plus done students now I have to write the largest anion so when I have to write cation anion it's a negative charge and positive charge so cation positive charge anion negative charge always so the largest anion <coughs> or anionic uh, size uh, this is an anionic size no, or uh, an anion is iodine minus so the largest one is iodine minus the smallest is the smallest cation is H plus done let us come back to the next trend after atomic size let us go with electronegativity now right let us start let me put the, move the page a bit forward yeah i'll put that electro uh, negativity in uh, the next column so we very well electronegative ability to pull or drag the electron from the outermost valence electron isn't it valence shell rather pull out the electron from the outermost shell so in electronegativity again two things we have let us write highest on that side let us write lowest on this side so if i have to write the element with lowest electronegativity in periodic table is cesium okay students next the element with highest electronegativity highest electronegativity is what it's nothing but fluorine done this fluorine further means after fluorine the next element in the periodic table is oxygen correct so oxygen is the next electronegative element done students now let's come back to the next factor that is electron affinity so when i have to take electron affinity is the next concept again i will take the same uh, square box and learn two categories under this what are this i said lowest i'll take it on this side highest i'll be taking on this side yes students so in the next video i'll be teaching what is electron affinity what are the trends in the whole of periodic table so when i take electron affinity on this side i said we'll be writing the lowest electron affinity element on this side i'll be writing highest electron affinity element so when I take lowest electron affinity element, it would be nothing but noble gases. We very low. Noble gases have lowest electron affinity. When I have to take the highest electron affinity element, it is nothing but chlorine is the highest electron affinity element. Now after now we have atomic size over, electronegativity is over. Now electron affinity is over. Let's start with let's start to write. Uh, I understand um, what do you say after electron negativity okay let me write electro positivity also okay so after electronegativity electro positivity is the next factor 
So in electropositivity, let me put a box. We have written electronegativity in the earlier page here. Now I'm writing electropositivity. Again, as I told you, I'll be writing least on this side. I'll be writing highest on this side. So the element with least electropositivity is fluorine. The element with highest or most electropositive, highest electropositivity is cesium. That's done. Yes. Now, electronegativity over electropositivity over atomic size over, okay, electron affinity over. Let us write the next concept as ionization potential. Yes. Right. So, when I write ionization potential, let me take IP. Again, in IP, I'll be writing both on the side. And this. The element with the lowest ionization potential is cesium because the size is big. The element with highest ionization potential is helium because it is an inert gas. Isn't it, student? Now, let us write with the next criteria. Let us come back. Now, we have seen atomic size. We have seen electronegativity. We have seen electropositivity. We have also seen the trends in electro affinity. It means not the trends, basically the lowest and the maximum, the least to the max highest um, element. Right. Now, let us see a trend in melting point and boiling point. Suppose melting point, if I have to take and if I have to take boiling point. Then, right. So, in melting point, again, let us write on this side, left hand side, lowest. I like writing on this side. Now, more, uh, melting point, if I have to write highest. So, when I take lowest melting point, right, and here lowest melting point and uh, lowest, uh, you know, the boiling point, non metal. Lowest melting point and lowest uh, boiling point, non metal, right, right. Next, next one, highest melting point and Low, uh, highest melting point as well as highest uh, boiling point also. Lowest melting point, lowest boiling point, non-metal is what? That's nothing but helium. Let us come back to this. Highest melting point and highest boiling point metal. Metal. What is that? It is nothing but mercury. Right. You are liking this, I think. Let us come back with boiling point. The element with or the non-metal with highest so hey, highest boiling point non-metal highest boiling point non-metal highest boiling point talking here only about highest boiling point non-metal that's nothing but your carbon right so in that carbon what is that form that is nothing but diamond the diamond form has the highest boiling point and it is a non-metal because we very well know it's very difficult to break the diamond and boil it because of the strong bonds among them yes students yes now let's come back to the next category let's see which is an, if i have to take hydrogen as an element now hydrogen is this element what are the different names given to this Basically, in periodic table, hydrogen uh, is known to be, means among this, it is the lightest element in the periodic table. Means hydrogen, when it is categorized, lightest element of the periodic table. This is also called notorious element, remember. So, hydrogen is a lightest element as well as notorious element. When they ask you in the question, both the ways you can answer. Lightest is hydrogen, notorious element also is hydrogen. I think this is uh, getting clear students to you all. Now, what, what did we learn? We have learned atomic size. We have learned electronegativity. We have learned electropositivity. We have learned electron affinity. Then I have taught you melting point. Then I have taught you boiling point. Then I have taught you what is the name given to hydrogen. Now, let us speak in terms of conduct of electricity. All right. So, when I have to write after hydrogen, let me shift my page a bit further up so that it is clear to you all. Yes, students. Right. So, now when I write speak about conduct, conductance or conducti, uh, conductor of electricity. So, which conducts electricity, which allows the electrons to flow. So, when I have to take, right, conductor of electricity, both the sides. The metal which is conductor of electricity is silver. The non-metal which is conductor of electricity, non-metal which is conductor of electricity is graphite. Hope this is clear students. Metal conductor of electricity is silver. Non-metal conductor of electricity is graphite. Right. Let me take one more very important related to this. 
poorest conductor of electricity i should take that also no now we said conductor of electricity and i have to see at the same time poorest conductor of electricity so poorest conductor of electricity is what as you know it is nothing but diamond yeah it has covalent bond formation in that so covalent bond <coughs> tightly packed hence poorest uh, conductor of electricity is diamond this is over let me write one more what is that now i'll be writing in terms of density one more factor or one more concept of period periodic uh, elements we study right physical properties chemical properties the different parameters or the different characteristics of periodic table so density is also one more so the metal or the element which has density maximum in metals is osmium and iridium and when it, when i take in terms of non metals it is nothing but boron done students is it clear oh so nicely we have explained so many let's come back and go to the next category let me move my page above suppose if i they ask me question in terms of abundance abundance okay so abundance in earth crust abundance in uh, universe like that so let us write the first category the gas which is abundant means more in atmosphere gas abundant in atmosphere what is that it is nothing but nitrogen done right next one the element abundant in earth's crust so let us write element element abundant in earth's crust what is that nothing but oxygen done next element abundant in universe let's go this over now element abundant in earth crust is over isn't it now let us write in universe an element abundant in universe what is that it's nothing but hydrogen gas hydrogen now i'll also teach you what is this rarest element in earth's crust i have to learn that also isn't it so my charger filled out okay right so rarest element in earth's crust let us write that rarest element in earth's crust what is the rarest element in earth's crust it's nothing but astatine at so a s t a t i n e astatine now next metal in earth's crust means the abundant metal in earth's crust abundant metal in earth's crust what is that it is aluminium okay G uh, gas in earth atmosphere abundant element in earth's crust abundant element in universe abundant rarest element in earth's crust not abundant basically rarest element right uh, this is different rarest element in earth's crust astatine metal in earth's crust aluminium i think all all, all the information is there and under this page now i'll teach you one more in this what is that basically we what what did we learn let us recollect once we have learned uh, i think yeah first one we have studied about atomic size then we have studied about electron negativity then electropositivity electron affinity then we have studied about density we have studied about what is the, what is the factor about hydrogen then we have studied about you know elements like melting point means uh, the characteristics like melting point boiling point isn't it yes now let's start off with one more concept that is storage concept suppose if i have to store the element which you can store in water that's nothing but phosphorus phosphorus the element which you have to store in kerosene that is nothing but one a group elements one a group elements are there isn't it except lithium except lithium remaining all elements you can store in kerosene done students now let me start one more uh, concept here amphoteric nature let us write that amphoteric so abundance we have seen now we will see amphoteric that means which the, uh, the, uh, the elements which react with both acid as well as base amphoteric in nature right now let us write here first one 
the amphoteric metal what are the amphoteric metal we have mm, which is beryllium zinc is amphoteric metal aluminium is amphoteric metal tin is amphoteric lead is amphoteric the amphoteric oxide what is what are the amphoteric oxides which we have that is we have BeO Al2O3 ZnO PbO SnO SnO2 SbO2 Sb2 Sb2O3 As2O3 all these are amphoteric oxides done next what is an amphoteric metal oxide example of amphoteric sorry, metal oxide no metalloid which has which shows both the characteristics of the metal as well as non-metal so the amphoteric metalloid which we have in the periodic table is silicon remember the students yeah yes now what is the next one what category can i learn in the periodic table okay uh, means, uh, basically what is the lightest largest element period uh, Le, you know what is the smallest period right before that let me go with the heaviest and lightest okay suppose what is the heaviest natural occurring element heaviest naturally occurring element heaviest naturally occurring element what is the heaviest naturally occurring element available it is nothing but uranium when I take heaviest, let us take with the lightest. Now this is heaviest. Let me take with the lightest. So lightest, same thing. Natural lightest solid metal. Okay, lightest solid metal. So the lightest solid metal which we have here is nothing but lithium. Okay, students. Done. This is one category. Now I'll slowly go into a category like most abundant. Okay. So we have written more abundant. Now we will write most abundant. So when I take most abundant means in I am talking about periodic table now. So in a periodic table most abundant in periodic table in S block D block like that we will write. So in periodic table most abundant D block element is what in P block um, or uh, S block. So let us say S block in S block what is the most abundant element I will also teach you which is the most abundant gas in nature gas in the atmosphere so in s block the most abundant element available is calcium in d block the most available element in is iron and the gas in atmosphere the gas which is present abundant in atmosphere is nothing but nitrogen gas right students yes now let us speak something about the periodic table in a periodic table what is the smallest period let us write that the smallest period uh, guest students let me you know be very well know it the smallest one would be the first period how many does it have it has only two elements correct that is your hydrogen on this side helium on that side what is the largest period which we have the largest uh, period in the periodic table that is the sixth period how many elements are there 32 elements are there in that right now let me start with the largest group i should not say large uh, smallest group isn't it nothing all are equal here so the largest group is nothing but 3b elements group how many elements are there there also 33 elements are there in the largest group I have studied about so many things today, isn't it? 63 facts I say. Okay, I am trying to give all the data which I could get or collect it from different, different sources. Right. Now, next thing after largest, after smallest, after uh, the concept of abundant element, let us start. What is, uh, one more concept means this is what a dry, if they give you, what is that thing? Suppose, what if they ask you, what is dry bleacher? Means bleaching agent basically. If they ask you, what is dry ice? So dry bleacher is nothing but hydrogen peroxide. Dry ice is nothing but solid carbon dioxide. This is done. Right. So dry bleacher is hydrogen peroxide and dry ice is solid carbon dioxide. Hope this is clear students. I am not confusing you all. I am because the concept here like this if you study like this it is easy for you. 
yes right so here in density thing we have written density earlier now let us see the same density if it is highest non metal or highest metal so i think in the earlier thing we have done this density concept but here remember highest non metal okay, let me write again density concept density if we, what is the element with highest density both highest only highest non metal and which is the element which has highest metal means it is the same thing but here i'm writing in terms of non metal and metal so the the element or the metal which highest density is nothing but osmium and iridium the element the metal with highest density is osmium and iridium again the metal with higher I means so the non metal with highest density is nothing but boron right students this is clear i hope uh, this is clear students right let me add some more to this today i wanted all the information to reach to all my students so i'm writing some more facts what are they so what are the noble metals which we have what are the volatile metals in deep block what is a poisonous element what is uh, uh, this one uh, liquid non metal what is a high uh, lightest element like that let us note all those things so if i have to add some more what are the noble noble met, no, not noble elements noble metals it's nothing but gold and platinum noble elements everybody know zero group elements of group 18 that is helium neon argon krypton and xenon but here the vast noble elements now let me write one more category what are the volatile metals which we have in the periodic table the two in d block what do are they zinc cadmium mercury u and b we write it as u and b by m by means two students one one two element 112 element next what is a poisonous poisonous element which we have poisonous element which we have that's nothing but plutonium so this also pluto plutonium remember the students which is a non metal which is liquid in state so okay, let us write that liquid non metal so what is liquid non metal it's nothing but bromium uh, bromine i'm sorry not bromium bromine next the lightest element as we know it's nothing but hydrogen i think i have mentioned earlier i am writing it again the lightest metal is nothing but hydrogen they ask you what is the lightest metal you should confidently say hydrogen is the lightest metal because you know small small things we think is a very small but nothing to remember we have to because such questions only will make us you know get close to the uh, wherever you go right next one let us write what is the strongest base which we have so in, or, in organic chemistry the strongest base is cesium hydroxide now strongest basic oxide what is the strongest basic oxide we will see the strongest basic oxide is cs2o same thing one more which is a stable carbonate which we have stable carbonate let us write stable carbonate so the stable carbonate is cesium carbonate right the element with highest oxidation state in the periodic table highest oxidation state is osmium what is oxidation state of osmium it is plus 8 remember that plus 8 is a oxidation state of osmium right students yes i think i think almost i have covered all the uh, listen if anything is missed out let me yeah let us uh, come back some something is missed out let me let me cover that also right so uh, group with maximum gaseous elements let us write that group with i told 63 facts so let me cover that group with maximum gaseous elements so which is the group which are which has maximum gaseous elements in that they are asking so the group is the last group that is group 18 elements so in group 18 is a group which we have maximum elements that is group 18 what do you call it is nothing but zero group helium neon argon krypton and xenon right next what are the total number of gaseous elements in periodic table total number of gaseous elements in periodic table 
gaseous elements in periodic table basically 11 gaseous elements are there what are they hydrogen nitrogen oxygen fluorine chlorine helium neon argon krypton and xenon right students yes right next important thing okay how many did i write three six three six nine ten okay ten i'm sorry next students which is a which are the uh, total number of liquid liquid elements okay let me write that total number of elements which are in liquid state liquid elements so basically if i have to write there are six what are they gallium cesium francium barium mercury and u and b atomic number element one one two in the periodic table right students now one more let us add to our book what is that an element uh, means an element which is liquid and it is radioactive okay let us write liquid element i should not write like this but i'm um, just for your clear understanding liquid element which is radioactive which is radioactive so it is francium confident you can say francium next how many total radioactive elements we have in the periodic table basically 25 radioactive elements are there total number of radioactive elements how many 25 are there so now what is a volatile d block element in this okay and we said there are liquids so what is a volatile d block element which we have let us write that so volatile d block element so volatile d block element which we have is zinc cadmium mercury okay done so uh, with the students i think i've covered almost all the uh, concepts of inorganic chemistry I have made almost four to five pages thank you for watching students <clears throat> with this i've covered 63 important facts of inorganic chemistry so in my next video very interesting video it will be a little bit time I'll watch this video completely in that i'll be teaching you different trends in periodic table after that according to your request i'll be doing the structures in periodic table understood students so uh, signing off here with the important facts of inorganic chemistry in the periodic table 63 facts important 63 facts in periodic table or 63 facts of inorganic chemistry lot of time it took for me to collect but thank you so much for watching students practice all these things i'll meet you again in the next video with the trends in a different way in a different sequence you'll understand you love the concept basically thank you good night bye bye Right. So, welcome back students. Let us start off with your JEE NEET 2020 preparation. So, as in the community tab, as we have thought, inorganic chemistry is the first concept which I am going to start. So, the difficult part of inorganic chemistry on daily basis, I will be mentioning or sending you in the form of trick. I will give you sets and sets of different, different types of reactions where everything will have a trick. So, let us see the first trick for inorganic chemistry, how to memorize the reaction. So, let us start. So, when I take this compound, what are these? Basically, all these are interhalogen compounds, isn't it? So, whenever interhalogen compound is given to you, suppose in the question paper, if they ask you so and so interhalogen compound combines with water. So, in interhalogen compound, basically we have four sets. What are they? AX type, AX3 type, AX5 type and AX7 type. Done. Suppose if I take AX, right? So, in this AX, suppose if it is combining with water, what happens? When AX3 combines with water, what happens? When AX5 combines with water, what happens? And AX7 combines with water, what happens? So, first let us have one picture of general uh, equation for that, right? So, when I take AX type, now what is A? In this, in interhalogen compounds, there is a combination of both two different halogens, right? One would be the larger one, one would be the smaller one. Larger one, smaller, larger, smaller, right? So, in interhalogen compound, one would be the larger one, one would be the smaller halogen. 
halogen atom just see whenever x type is given to you when it is hydrolyzed you will be getting common thing that is hao remember for ax you will be getting hao we'll see what hao is done right for ax3 you will be getting a hao2 for ax5 you will be getting hao3 for ax7 you will be getting hao4 simple let's start again for ax you will be getting hao for ax3 you will be getting hao2 for ax5 you will be getting hao3 for ax7 you will be getting hao4 so 1o 2o's 3o's and 4o's done but the common thing everywhere is hx hx is common every reaction hx is common now with this general formula let us start off writing the reaction when i take the first interhalogen compound i have picked up different different combinations so what is in my mind as soon as i see the interhalogen compound first thing take your pen and write like this what is this atom this is bigger atom this is smaller this is smaller this is bigger isn't it now see the combinations for everything it's the same always combination is a bigger at first one a smaller atom a bigger atom a bigger atom will come by right let us see a smaller atom is first then bigger then bigger right let us see the combination of this now what is the first thing i said hao when ax compound is there hao so what is h here h what is a here i said bigger atom compared to this the first one is hi next o what is left over thing one more h is here h now i said you you still have this chlorine hcl will come out so hx is hcl done so smaller bigger and bigger atom let us write here now h bigger atom is cl then comes o what is left out now hf is left out now in this combination bigger h what is the bigger atom in these two br o what is left out hf easy isn't it right now let us come back and see ax3 combination now so same concept when ax3 is there i'll be getting hao2 here hao is a thing here hao2 is a compound form same concept again take a smaller bigger bigger done what is the smaller atom here h now what is the bigger atom here iodine what is in the next one o2 what is left out hcl is left out let us see here same concept i have to write h bigger atom compared to these two it is cl right then what is this o2 what is left out hf easy isn't it now let's come back and see the next one when i take ax5 the compound which i have to get is hao3 same concept right sbb <coughs> done what is uh, here smaller atom hydrogen what is the next one bigger atom here iodine what is the next combination oxygen how much will be the three now what is left out here hf is left out let us see the next one same concept sbb let's see here start with h then what is the bigger atom here compared to these two chlorine what is the next combination o3 and what is left out hf now when i take this same combination h here i have to take the bigger atom here bigger atom is bromine what is oxygen in this form o3 plus what is left out hf next let us come here in this combination what is a smaller atom h what is the bigger atom i what is the next one oxygen o3 what is the left over is hf easy isn't it now right when we come back and see the last reaction that is ax7 what did we say in ax7 the compound formula is hao4 let us write so again apply the formula sbb right now h a smaller atom is here h what is the bigger atom in these two i what is this oxygen four what is left out now hf is left out done isn't it so this is how we are going to do or learn the trick understand students it's clear and easy general formula trick and use it so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten almost ten reactions we can learn it in two or three minutes